to the news updates on African Air Television, reaching from our studio in the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. I am Deborah Eze. Many thanks for joining me. We begin from Nigeria, Alaji Ibrahim Masari, a close associate of Tinubu and placeholder before the choice of Senator Kashim Shatima as vice presidential candidate of the APC yesterday, confirmed talks between presidential candidates of the All Progressives Congress APC, Senator Bola Tinubu, and Governor Yeso Wike of River State, saying the latter has agreed to work for the success of the former in 2023. Also confirming the meeting, the Ashiwaji Project Beyond 2023 group said the meeting is a good omen for the party ahead of the 2023 general election. Despite the London meeting, there were, however, conflicting reports that the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, may have headed to London in an effort to woo the river governor. While a source said he left for London, another source from the former VP's camp said that Atiku left Nigeria for Paris after attending the opening ceremony of the annual conference of Nigeria Bar Association, NBA. And now moving on, the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo has declared that Nigeria is seeking 10 billion US dollars from international partners to fund the nation's new energy transition plan. This was just as the World Bank and the US Exim Bank are pledged to assist Nigeria in its energy renewal efforts with 3 billion US dollars. Speaking yesterday in Abuja at the virtual launch of Nigeria's energy transition plan, a roadmap to tackle the dual crisis of energy poverty and climate change. Osibajo stated that Nigeria is currently engaging with partners to secure an initial 10 billion US dollar support package ahead of COP27 along the lines of South African Just Energy Transition Partnership announced at COP26 in Glasgow. According to him, Africa's increasing energy gaps require collaboration to take ownership of the continent's transition pathways and the action should be decisive and urgent. Other speakers at the event commended Nigeria's leadership and empowering role in the region, emphasizing the need for data-driven country-level energy transition plans that recognize the unique pathways each country would need to take in order to achieve a just, inclusive and equitable energy transition Forum. Away from Nigeria, the International Criminal Court's Chief Prosecutor said Sudan had promised its full cooperation in the war crimes probe of atrocities committed in the Darfur region under ousted President Omar al Bashir. Karim Khan spoke after meeting Army Chief Abdel Fattah al Bahan, Usispa, last year in a coup. He said, and I quote, the words that I have just heard from the chair of the Sovereignty Council are very positive. The challenge now is delivering those in practice. What I do say is that we need to act. It is an embarrassment, a collective embarrassment that after 17 years of the Security Council referral, so much more still needs to be done. He said Bohan, who was a senior general under Bashir, has promised his full cooperation and commitment to justice for the people in Darfur, Khan added, as he wrapped up his trip. Bashir, who had been in custody in Khantoum since 2019, Ulster, has been wanted by the ICC for more than a decade over charges of genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity in the four. Still on the African scene, a total of 23,495 people in Ghana tested positive for HIV in the first half of this year, that is January to June. The figure is 2% of the 948,094 people who undertook HIV testing from January to June 2022. The program manager of National STIs and HIV AIDS Control Program, Dr. Stephen Aisiado, said in a report filed by State Newspaper. Dr. Aisiado said most of the 23,495 people who tested positive had since been put on HIV treatment. He attributed the figure to compliance and ignorance, explaining that awareness creation on the part of health workers had decreased. Overall, he said, as of December 2021, the estimated population of HIV-positive persons in the country was 350,000, with only 71% being identified by the control program. Of that number, he noted that over 245,000, representing 99%, were on treatment as of June this year. 
He said about 79% of those who had the disease and were taking their medication had reached the non-detectable that stage, which means they cannot transmit the virus to others. Dr. Aisia Doe added that the prevalence of the disease was higher in men who had sex with men with a prevalence part or rate of 18% in female sex workers with a prevalence of 4.6%. We now go on a short break and when we come back, it's updates making the rounds of the foreign scene. Stay with me. And now welcome back on to the foreign scene. A Russian missile attack killed 22 civilians and set a passenger train on fire in eastern Ukraine. Officials in Kiev said with missile strikes north of the capital as Ukraine marked its Independence Day under heavy shelling. President Volodymyr Zelensky has warned of the risks of a repugnant Russian provocation ahead of the 34th anniversary on Wednesday of Ukraine independence from Moscow-dominated Soviet rule and public celebrations were cancelled. The other day also coincided with six months since Russia forces invaded Ukraine, touching off Europe's most devastating conflict since World War II. In video remarks to the United Nations Security Council, Zelensky said rockets hit a train in small town of Chaplin, some 145 kilometers west of Russian-occupied Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. A boy was killed in the first attack when a missile hit his house and 21 people died later when rockets hit the railway station and set fire to five train carriages, he said in a statement. The Russian Defense Ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but Russia denies targeting civilians. And now moving on, Yemen HSA Group on Thursday became the first private entity to pledge funds for United Nations operation to avoid an oil spill from a tanker stranded over the coast of Yemen as the UN urgently tries to secure an initial requirement of 80 million US dollars. The international organization, which has so far raised 60 million US dollars, has warned that a safer stranded since 2015 off a Red Sea oil terminal could spill four times as much oil as the 1989 Exxon Valdez disaster near Alaska. The UN has raised the 4 million US dollars, including the HSA pledge, and more than 142,000 US dollars through a public crowdfunding drive initiated in June, and which will be relaunched later this month, a UN spokesperson said in a response to a query. The crowdfunding campaign had aimed to raise 5 million US dollars towards the plan to transfer the oil to a safe temporary vessel before winter sea increased the risk of a breakup. Russell Giki, a spokesperson for the top UN official in Yemen, has said the organization owed HSA contribution would serve as a catalyst for other private entities. Still on the foreign scene, Japan's National Police Agency chief said on Thursday he wanted to resign to take responsibility for the shooting of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in July. The remarks at a press conference by Itaru Nakamura, whose agency is in charge of Japan's police, represent the highest profile fallout of Abe's assassination. Securing the western city of Nara on July 8th, 
The day of the shooting had been widely seen as insufficient. Bodyguards could have saved Abby by shielding him or pulled him from the line of fire in the 2.5 seconds between a missed first shot and the second. Fatal round of gunfire, a security expert who reviewed the footage have said. Japanese officials, including Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, have acknowledged flaws in the security around Abe's appearance at the election campaign event. The National Police Agency previously said the killing had been the result of police failing to fulfill their responsibility, adding that it has set up a team to review security and protection measures and involve preventive steps. We now head to the sports scene. Manchester City will host Chelsea in the third round of the 2022 and 2023 Carabao Cup. Pep Guardiola's men, who won the competition four times in a row between 2017 and 2021 and beat the Blues in 2019 final, will become the London Dares of to the Ethiad during the week commencing November 7th. Meanwhile, current holders Liverpool will beat Chelsea on penalties in last season final Wembley, who face League One side Derby, with Brentford drawn against Willingham and Newport set to travel to face Leicester at the King Park. And finally, Ivory Coast international defender Eric Bailey has been loaned with an option to buy to French League One club Marseille, the club said Wednesday. The fee would reportedly be 6 million euros while Marseille takes on Bailey 5 million euros annual salary. Bailey joined United from Villarreal in 2016 and has played 113 times for the English side. He has, however, slipped down the hierarchy at United since the arrival of Lissandro Matens. Harry Maguire, Ralph Varane, and Victor Lindlove. And that concludes the news update on Africania Television. Do follow all our social media platforms on Join to Pangram, Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter in that respective order. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and also link us up on www.africunia.tv to stay connected and updated for news and our other programs. Once again, I am Deborah Eze. Bye for now.